All right, welcome in here to the Coach Mark Schmidt Show, presented as always by Aria Health, NeshaminiFootball.com, Faulkner Auto Group, and Denny Electric. I'm here with head coach of Neshaminy Redskins as they get set for the PIAA Quad A District 1 semifinal matchup this week against Abington, a game you can hear on 1490 WBCB as well as WBCB1490.com. You also come on out to Heartbreak Ridge and see their final home game of the year, they have maxed out their home game. So this is the last one you guys can come out and see here at Harry e. Frank's. We tell you to come on out. Uh, talk about the Spring Four game that we uh, you guys won last week in the quarterfinals. But first, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about a, a big victory at Hershey this weekend for another Deshamini yeah, group. Uh, girls soccer, state champs in the Class 3A, so congrats to them. I know some of your coaches are up there, some of your boys are up Everybody, there as well. That was great. And uh, I had a doubleheader in the afternoon with... Uh, my 10-year-olds, they both had their last games, one at 1.15 and one at uh, about 2.30. Okay. So, uh, you know, getting up there. So we hustled home and got it on TV. And, uh, nice, good. You know, it's a good Rachel, game, wasn't Rachel, it? Uh, you know, Rachel Clemens, the head coach, and, you know, her staff, and the girls are just, they're on a mission. I mean, they were, you know, they're seniors, and most of them, and great leadership, and, you know, made the semis last year, and they just very talented, and, and, and another Spring Ford win. Yeah. So it was a Spring Ford weekend. That's right. So, uh, we were we were very happy. I mean, we we're happy to get things started, and we we're very happy they finished it. So uh, congrats to them, and couldn't be happier. Well, this will be the last question with that, but I know a lot of your guys went up to Hershey to watch the game. Oh, yeah. They, they gave them a little, maybe a little extra juice well, this know, week. Yeah, maybe? I hope so. You know, a, a lot of them. You know, they they pay in the stands, and they were they were it was their turn to wear the the, the red skin uh -huh. you know t shirts. Right. And, and uh, you know, a couple guys. Uh, are dating some of the girls on the team, okay. so uh, you know there's a real nice there's a real nice mix there, and cool. uh, you know they they're very supportive of us on Friday, and we were thrilled for the most part to be able to on Tuesday night to go to the local semi game at Tenet, and then uh, you know be able to you know get things done early, and then get up there to Hershey and cheer for them. So it was awesome. Well, a lot of cheering going on on Friday night as the Chamois defeated Springport, but uh, Spring Ford, excuse me, put up 56 points. On their opponent and coach, a, a big win, another stellar performance by DeAndre Pollard, and uh, his team's really clicking now offensively. It looks well, like DeAndre ran. Uh, we ran DeAndre a little too much. That was mm -hmm. my fault. I shouldn't have done that, but uh, shouldn't have. You know, we should have spread it around a little more, choking. And um, you know, but uh, the offensive line, we challenged them up. They had a good team, and uh, their yeah. defense was uh, formidable. And um, I thought the first series we did a nice job. We didn't finish it with with an extra point that was sloppy, but uh, our protection. But um, uh, you know, back and forth there early on. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they showed their metal and their firepower, and and um, uh, I think we kind of we opened a window for them with a couple of you know timely turnovers for, sure. on us. And uh, to our credit, our defense answered that second turnover. You know, Devin made a great pick there and, and kind of got things back on track. And, and then from there we were able to kind of just you know get going a little bit in the second half. Um, it was good to see our see our guys show some metal, and, and then at the end they they got a little desperate with some passes, and it was great to see you know Devin and Matt Mags you know yep. get two, and and uh, our guys would practice that that drill every every day you know up convoy and get downfield and block, and it was a really good effort. It was great to see on film and point out after at the end of a season when you get a chance to. Finish it, and, and they did, and uh, so that part's rewarding. And um, but now, you know, here we sit, and yeah. you know, we've got a very formidable opponent that I think is getting health. You know, they're healthier, and I think they're getting better. Uh, going back to last week, uh, it seems like the last two weeks now against Unionville and Springford, uh, you guys have come out and taken the team's best punch offensively and defensively, um, and you've answered the the bell in a sense in the second or, or third quarter. Um, you know how how nice was that to see when. Springford comes out, they, they, they put points on the board quick, and they do it again off the turnover, and you guys are kind of on your heels, and your team comes back out, and you said Devin makes a big play. Uh, a lot of resilience from this team, looks like. Well, uh, you know, you're right. I, and I thought that um, the one thing that when you look back and reflect, uh, no one pushed a panic button, yep. I mean, you know, even me, you know, which is you know, unusual. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, it was, it was the, the turnover, that the fumble the exchange, you know, Came right off the field, coach. That was all me. My bad. Sorry. I'll make up for it. And you know what? We did. And uh, to his credit, you know, I'm not going to say who it was, but it was a guy that took the responsibility. And then for the rest of the game, you know, you just saw him really you know, do the best he could to, to make up for it. And, sure. and, and they did. And so, 
you know, and counting on his teammates, and he was the first guy out there to congratulate the guy that, you know, that that uh, the Devin that made the pick, you know, to kind of save him a little bit there, and you know, Tyler tried to get the ball out of bounds, but he, you know, he made a bad throw, and you know, he was another one that kind of went back out there and made up for it. So, it's nice to see us do those things, right. and um, you know, we as we move along, we've got to eliminate that stuff. Though we can't we can't give people opportunities early because uh, the talent's just too good. You know, a lot of teams this year has been staying away from Devin Brown for good reasons in a sense of throwing the football. You don't you don't see the ball thrown to his his way a lot because of the talent he is. Uh, and this week he was challenged with a really good wide receiver that's been yeah. had a big physical guy. Um, and he, he when you talk to him about it, I'm sure you've seen it as well. Uh, he likes that. He likes going against the number one and kind of getting pushed. Well, he does. And uh, you know, I last thing I want to do is jinx him, but you know, he he he's been playing with. The best thing he's been doing is playing. He's really working on his technique, right. and um, you know he's he's just smiling. He's he's working at it. Um, you know, last week was crazy. I mean, he didn't even practice Tuesday and practice half Wednesday because his um, you know he had a roaring fever and was sick. And, mm. and um, but came out Wednesday and you know Coach French tried to throw a couple at him there wrinkles and he was right on it and you know being Devin and then Thursday felt okay and then Friday obviously he you know he. Cranks it up, so we took a little off the offensive side based on you know his attendance and because uh, we knew we needed a more defensive, right. and that's where I think we leaned on DeAndre a little too much. But um, you know Denny and Blake and you know those guys did a nice job, and, and Trokin's got to get in the mix a little bit. Uh, Denzel Hughes again. Uh, you know, it was a big interception night. Devin has two. Matt Maggs has one. Denzel has one. Right. Uh, he's doing a really good job in that center field position. He's a young guy. You know, he's you know. a sophomore. He's playing great. Was a very athletic, you know, very athletic interception, and um, you know they were going to the ball hard, and, and um, you know I, they, it's an it's an athletic group back there that, that, that um, you know I think we can count on a little bit. Uh, it's got to feel good now. Uh, last four teams uh, in districts, uh, three of them coming from suburban one league yeah. conference, one from the Pac-10. Um, you know, people might say this is this is a down year in the national conference, but when your third place team goes to the uh, goes to the uh, semis to play you guys, it's, it, it yeah, seems pretty deep. Place. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we're not the first. Yeah. So uh, you know, we, 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 we had our opportunity and that didn't happen. So you know, and Tim and his staff have uh, they've got a very good team, and yeah. uh, you know, they've had some mid season uh, issues that they've dealt with, and guys have stepped up and played very well. And uh, you know, I really felt. We spoke um, before the Garner Valley game. I saw the Unionville team play them, and uh, you know Unionville went out pretty good. And, mm -hmm. and then we played Unionville, and I really feel that Abington's better than Unionville. And I felt that um, I said to him, I said, "Look, I, I really think physically you guys match up great." Yeah. And, and they went down there and had an awesome win. And I'm sure they're going to be very confident and very fired up to, to to try to fix you know our game last year. We'll see what happens on Friday night at Heartbreak Ridge, 7 o'clock here. You can come on out to Harry Frank's Memorial Stadium. You can also listen to it on WBCB 1490 and WBCB1490.com. we come back, we'll talk about this Abington game and a trip to district title on the line this Friday here at Harry Frank's Memorial Stadium. We'll be right back. The Aria 3B Orthopedic Institute is redefining care in Center City and South Jersey. And our 50,000 square foot location on Aria Health's Bucks Campus in Langhorne features private rooms, free parking, and nearby hotels. With over a century of experience, the world-class 3Bs, Drs. Booth, Bartolozzi, Balderston, and their partners personally guide you from treatment through recovery. For all your orthopedic needs, call 1-888-ORTHO-3B or visit ariath3bortho.org. At the Aria 3B Orthopedic Institute, you come first. Connect with another bright idea from Denny Electric Supply, Business Route 1 in Pendell. Denny Electric Supply is the professional's choice for fast, friendly service with same-day delivery on thousands of items, including hard-to-find items from A to Z. For over 70 years, Denny Electric Supply is still locally owned and operated, with over eight locations serving residential, industrial, and commercial customers. And now is the time to prepare for winter. Don't be left in the cold again. Denny Electric has Generac generators in stock for home or business. Check out all the bright ideas from Denny Electric Supplies on Business Route 1 in Pendale. Open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturdays, 8 a.m. to noon. The Mark Schmidt Show is brought to you in part by NeshaminiFootball.com, a proud supporter of Neshamini Football. Whether it's 2013 team information or a look back at Neshamini's 85-year football history, make it NeshaminiFootball.com. 
All right, welcome back into the Coach Mark Schmidt Show, presented as always by Aria Health and the ShamaniFootball.com, Faulkner Auto Group, and Denny Electric. We're here to talk about now the District 1 semifinal matchup uh, between the Chamonix and Abington this Friday night at Harry E. Franks Memorial Stadium. And I mentioned earlier, you have maxed out your home games. That's got to feel pretty good uh, going into the season. Yeah. You guys reached a point where cool. you can't play anymore. So. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we, we kind of... We kind of got a sniff of that as we were moving along, and um, when we we knew if we beat Abington, um, that would give us nine wins and pretty much ensure a home game. Mm -hmm. So that we knew that that would give us at least you know one more senior night, and right. then, uh, then the win you know got us another one. And then uh, this week, you know, people ask me, well, would you rather play Garner Valley or would you rather play Abington again? And you know, I mean. Garner, Garner Valley is a good football team, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but that trip is murder, and we've been there, and um, you know, I'm sure Tim feels the same way after being there. You know, it's great that it, it would absolutely stink to drive down there and not win. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, you know, so to have another home game, I really don't care who we're playing, mm -hmm. because um, it just, you know, the, it's our third one, and and I, like I said, these you know these guys are great, and uh, they've done what we've asked them to do, and. When doing that has uh, given them another shot, so it's kind of cool. Another shot for Abington as well is you guys played them back in uh, <clears throat> week nine and you beat them 31-14, uh, but uh, really a tough game. Uh, that was the real first, uh, you would say, test for four quarters you guys had the, yeah. uh, the, the whole season. Uh, I'm sure you would say a not clean football game as far as penalties are concerned uh, on yeah, both sides. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, that's a, that was a crazy game that way. Uh, it was a game that... that you know, if you if you let it get to you, and if you let adversity kind of cloud your mind a little bit, it would have um, it, it really could have gotten crazy. Right. And uh, I credit our guys for hanging in there and, and for battling and, and uh, coming out the other end. You know, settling down and playing good, solid you know second half of football. And as, as as you know, interesting as it was, I mean, uh, but uh, that's the past. You learn from those kind of things sure. and you move on. And uh, you know, we saw. You know, I think we, for that game we found we had a kicker, and I yeah. think that game our defense really just played real solid, except for one or two big plays. And then offensively, I, I think the second half it was good to see the offensive line and and uh, you know see us kind of settle down and and because uh, we that was really the first really good defensive line that we we played. Yeah. And um, you know, and we were not ready for it early, and you know, and, and, and we kind of settled down a little bit and realized that we had to just do our job and. You know, and, and, <clears throat> and technique and such, and it it started to help us a little bit. Uh, you mentioned the defense in that game, and, and really uh, a guy that's been the mainstay all season, but that was really his coming out party in a sense, was Denny Lord, yeah. uh, linebacker that night. He's been a mainstay now every week since. Yeah. Um, that was really a, a big night for him and a big night for your defense as well to handle that right. adversity. Well, you know, you're right. And, um, you know, he showed up that day ready to roll. And um, not that he hasn't in the past, right. but, uh, you know, I, like I said, uh, with all the, it's interesting. Everybody talks about you know, everybody on their teams and such. I mean, you know, for for us to have you know six guys playing new positions, you know, mm -hmm. after playing two or th one or two or three years of varsity football in another position, sure. you know, that, that's that's a tall order. And uh, you know, when you get to week six, seven, with seven, eight, nine, you start getting a little more comfortable. And it was we were lucky enough that everybody was kind of settled into their positions and. Feel a little more comfortable in their in their assignments and roles and techniques and you know everything's different when you yeah. when you move around like that and um, from outside to inside inside to outside yeah. so so um, you know it, it's a whole new ball game so at that time he kind of really started to get his feet underneath him and uh, a little more confident in, in what he was seeing and doing and and uh, I was thrilled. And each team has their own identity, whether it's you know speed, uh, you know endurance, physicality. Uh, when you play at Abington, I know every time we talk about them, the two things you mention is, is big and toughness, and uh, there's probably two elements that they really uh, harp on as a team. Well, I think so, and uh, you know Tim and uh, Tim and his guys, you know, they they do a terrific job, and um, you know their offense is is uh, is very is very explosive, it's dynamic. Uh, you know he talks about. You know, the quarterback situation. Well, this guy's come in and and uh, he's settled down and done a really good job. And he's throwing the ball well, and he understands the offense. And then uh, obviously, you know, having Reynolds back there and uh, looks like he's full strength, ready to roll. So, 
you know, and, and I, I really thought their offensive line and was was one of the better ones around. Yeah. And um, so, so and then defensively, they've always had extremely active guys up front. They've got guys that can cover in the back, and they've got a group of linebackers that run around and hit you. And it's kind of been their their mainstay for the last five or six years, and nothing's changed. You know, this is kind of just how the way the schedule worked out. That you guys were able to see them basically less than a month ago, so that you know, almost practically, the team you're going to see on Friday night is the one you guys played against three weeks ago, as opposed to if you played in week two or three or four when they had different guys in, different quarterback, different this guy. Um, you know, I know obviously you don't get into the, into the scheduling aspect, but um, does that help you guys? You, you played them so so close to the the date now, or? Well, I, you know, I I think it certainly has our guys' attention. I mean. Uh, Yesterday was uh, was a good work day, and um, we came right in, and our guys we put on Garner Valley and you know, number one seed, and, and uh, at their place, and they saw Abington go down there and and really knock them around, and uh, so uh, there's no there, there's no cockiness or no uh, you know uh, overconfidence or any of that kind of stuff. It was they were they're they're talking up what what, what the plays were that they were running. And, and they saw who and there was a couple guys they've changed and a couple of wrinkles that Tim's added to his, his package, which I think is has made them better. And uh, and I really think the fact that the guys got some games underneath them, that quarterback's got two playoff games underneath yeah. him now. And uh, so he's a very confident guy. And um, so and he's showing it. So uh, all in all, hey, here we go. Craig Reynolds back at 100%, uh, offensive line, uh, a, a mainstay, a new quarterback we mentioned. Hey, it's, he's got many playoff starts as, as your quarterback and running back and others. So, um, you know, it's a it's a veteran group now on their end in a sense. Hey, you know, it's, a, it's the same playoff experience on both sides of the football. And uh, this is going to be a good old-fashioned, uh, in a sense, a backyard battle. You guys are from the same conference. And uh, it wasn't too long ago that this was a normal rite of passage in 2008, 2009. You guys were playing them every, every you know, year almost. You seem to fall sense. in the same bracket. That's right. And, um, you know, I, I think that's, I guess, the way the, the numbers work with, you know, the wins and the losses and the two of us and such. And, and we always seem to kind of end up in, in, the, in, 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 the up, in the upper or lower ha half, mm -hmm. however it shakes. But, uh, you know, here we go. Yeah, it's got to feel good knowing you're a week away from Thanksgiving. You guys are still alive in the playoff hunt. And I'm it sure is. you guys, because uh, you said in the past that you know sometimes the best uh, practice all year is that Thanksgiving morning it practice. Is. And uh, I'm sure you guys are looking forward to, to not only getting that practice, but more to come as well. Well, we're looking forward to you know look, we're looking forward to going out there this week and preparing for Abington. We're not looking forward to Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I haven't seen a game tape of anybody else. Right. And. Uh, and before spring forward, I didn't have a game tape of anybody else then. So, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, we dive into our opponent. We, we go back and, you know, research it and our, see what's different and see what's happening. And, and then, you know, look back as to, you know, past things and stuff and right. try to just really, you know, get into their heads. And uh, our, our guys, you know, they, we know them well and they know us well. Well, we'll end on this too. One guy that had a pretty big night last time I was played was uh, Ahmed Pack uh, up there at Abington. The guy you try to, uh, I'm sure, try to get one on one work with uh, with Abington. He's a guy had a big catch in spring forward yeah. uh, in that third. Uh, is he a guy you should try to open up more? And well, more? he's certainly a guy that's that's you know. And, and the best thing about Ahmed is is the fact that you know his his attitude has been great. And mm -hmm. um, you know there's been times where he hasn't been able to get the ball. Right. And uh, but his blocking has been. Excellent, and um, you know Keith Ennis gets on him pretty good, and um, I think he's bought in. Uh, he's certainly a guy that can make plays, sure. and um, you know ask Ken Denzel, ask Ken Cole, but um, you know, but Ham's you know he's a, he's a specialist on defense as far as a nickel package. Mm -hmm. He's kind of our guy offensively, and we spend a lot of time you know working on little things, trying to get things timed up and getting everything squared away. And uh, we took a shot with Denny, you know, just trying to get it down there to yeah. him, and, and uh, you know. We've got athletes that can do things, so we want people to know that you know they, they just can't sit there and play the run or play that. And we're gonna we're gonna you know, we're gonna take the shots and you know have faith in the guys that can play. We'll see what happens on Friday night. A bunch of athletes will be on Henry E. Frank's <laughs> Memorial Stadium field. District One semifinal here at Heartbreak Ridge. A game you can hear on 1490 WBCB. Come on out and see the game live at Harry E. Frank's Memorial Stadium. Your last time to see the 2013 Nishani Redskins at home as the rest of the way will be neutral sites. 
uh, from here on out. Pick 'em segment. We do it every each week. We'll do it real quick, rapid fire. Uh, Eagles, you go. Uh, you went that? one and one. You went Eagles. You went Niners. Niners lose it on a last second field goal that by the Saints. That was a bad call on that sack. Yes, it he was. Got, then he fell down and he hit. Oh, yeah. wow! You and I Mike mean, Dicker will di agree. I so. am. You know, look, I, I love Drew Brees, but you know he's not six foot. But <laughs> when you when you go around, you hit him in, around the chest. Uh -huh. I mean, they, they didn't touch the face mask until he fell down, and I was like, wow! A lot of controversial calls oh, uh, this weekend that was as well. Disappointing as last night as well. So I, I heard about that. I've, officials I have a bad rap this week. Check it out. So. Okay. So. I, uh, I got I got enough things. <laughs> Eagles uh, have a bye, so we'll go. Uh, we'll go two. Oh, the Eagles will win. Okay, they're good. I, I, it's one and zero. Oh. Uh, we got Giants, Cowboys, big oh, NFC geez. East game. Giants uh, playing some good football as of late. Uh, and, uh, right now, I'm Giants. Giants, I easy. Like, I like Coach Coughlin. I like. I hope they get rolling and you know beat the Cowboys. Okay, sure. another one. That'll help, that'll help the Eagles standings, right? Yes, it will. Oh, okay, yes. so hey, there we go. There you go. Uh, uh, Patriots Broncos as well. Uh, oh, great geez. quarterbacks, big game for both teams. Who do you like? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, what quarterback would you, first off, who's your quarterback if you had to pick one? Of the two? Yeah. Like this second? Let's just say if you had to pick one from day one. Oh, day one. Well, day one, you well, I'm saying knowing what you know now oh, no. to start your career, to start your franchise. Ah, <laughs> oh, shoot. This is you a tough what? debate. I, I, I'd flip a coin. Okay. Because you know what? I, I, I like them both. Okay. Gosh, they're, they're, they're warriors and they're great. So uh, I'll take either so one. So this, this, yeah. this game you're fine with as well? You know what? <laughs> Where is it? I think it's in New England. I'm almost positive. Okay. Well, Home team. He's so good, that guy. Yes, he is. And I, I just I Manning's feel bad. I feel I bit. feel awful bad for Brady because he just doesn't seem to have. He just doesn't have that guy. I mean, yeah. You know, and and, and Peyton Manning sure does. Mm -hmm. So I, I think Peyton. I think I think the Broncos will probably pull it out. So we go Broncos Giants. Is that right? Yeah. All right. So yeah. uh, we'll see if he can do uh, just, two and zero. Uh, most important, though, like you said, is going 1-0 this weekend for you. Oh, so wish best luck to you guys on Friday night. I really hope so. And, uh, again, once again, you can hear on 1490 WBCB. And coming out to Harry Frank's Memorial Stadium, I want to thank Aria Health, Faulkner Auto Group, NeshaminyFootball.com, and Denny Electric for hosting here the NeshaminyFootball.com. Coach Mark Schmidt Show. We'll see you Friday, everybody. Take care.